Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopist. In the previous tutorial, we looked at how a kernel can be used to convolve an image. And we did indeed define a Gaussian kernel. And uh, we looked at how to convolve an image with this kernel using OpenCV and uh, uh, SciPy. Now, this tutorial is a continuation of that where now we focus completely on the Gaussian filter, sometimes uh, referred to as Gaussian blur. And uh, in fact, the effect of this filter on an image is uh, typically denoising. Although Gaussian blur refers to the fact that uh, applying this filter blurs your input image. In fact, if you have used uh, Photoshop, one of the filters available in Photoshop is a Gaussian blur, so you can clearly see how it blurs the image. But from a microscopy image processing point of view, Gaussian is primarily used to denoise an image. And blurring automatically happens, so if it works for you, fine. Otherwise, use other types of filters. Now. Before jumping on, let's quickly understand, uh, jumping on to coding, let's quickly understand what this is. Again, if you are a biologist, uh, even then there is no excuse. I almost said if you're a biologist, maybe you, you're excused from understanding what a Gaussian is, but every scientist should know what normal distribution is, what a Gaussian is. So you probably have seen this bell curve or a Gaussian curve. This is a one-dimensional Gaussian curve. Okay, and uh, here you can see a two-dimensional Gaussian and mathematically it, it's represented by this equation over there. 1 over 2 pi sigma squared exponential e to the minus x squared plus y squared or 2 sigma squared. Okay, for one dimension it's just x squared over 2 sigma squared. Sigma squared is the variance, right? And uh, you can also define a Gaussian using just uh, sigma. Now, uh, let me, uh, let's go to the next slide. Again, I thought of animating this, but uh, uh, please stay with me here. When we are doing Gaussian filtering in Python, okay, you can define it either by kernel size or by sigma. When? Yeah, the choice is not yours. In fact, if you are using Gaussian blur in OpenCV, uh, you define it by using a kernel size. So here I'm just saying three by three kernel. If you are using this tool in uh, scikit image, it's defined by uh, a via a sigma. Okay. So uh, again, uh, the effect. If you look down here on the left hand side, uh, for the same kernel size, let's say, okay, the smaller sigma means you have the distribution, very tight distribution over here. A larger sigma means you have a pretty broad distribution over here. So obviously the effect of this on your input image is going to be different based on the sigma. So that's why instead of using a Gaussian kernel, like a three by three kernel in OpenCV, I prefer to use the one that's available in scikit image uh, for image processing. But again, I'll show you how to do it uh, either way. So even if you, it is sigma equals to 1, here is a quick example of the kernel looks like for sigma value equals to 1. Okay. Uh, again, I'm dividing this by 273 because when you add all of these values in here, uh, it adds to 273. So I'm just normalizing this. So as you can see, the central peak here and then every, the values taper off as you go radially outward. Okay. So this is a quick introduction to Gaussian. And uh, now let's jump on to the spider interface here. By the way, the code left over from my previous uh, lecture where we defined a Gaussian kernel manually. Uh, and uh, well, I think it makes sense. It's good uh, educational uh, lesson, I, sh uh, I should say. So let's go ahead and start by importing the light, uh, right library. So we know we need OpenCV. So let me go ahead and import that. We probably need uh, NumPy. So let's import that as, uh, what else do we need? So from scikit image, import IO because we want to read images using this. And let's also import image as float. Again, as I described in my previous tutorial, by using a floating point, we make sure that the math works out OK. OK, otherwise you'll run into some rounding errors and clipping errors and so on. What else? Uh, well, while we are here, let's actually go ahead and import from scikit image. If you remember, uh, the Gaussian is part of scikit image dot filters. And uh, let's just import 
Gaussian. Okay, so we can directly apply those and uh, I'm importing entire CV2, so let's uh, let's not worry about uh, importing open, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Gaussian from CV2 yet. Now let's go ahead and read our image. So I think in fact it makes sense to define two different images. I have one image with Gaussian noise and I have another image with some salt and pepper noise. Okay so let me create some more room here and let's read both. Images. This is uh, salt pepper noise and this image I believe I called it salt pepper uh, let's say salt pepper dot jpeg okay so uh, again all I'm doing is just importing the images and uh, just a sanity check let me go ahead and run it to make sure the images are imported uh, correctly okay so looks like everything is fine Okay, so now that the images are imported, uh, in fact, let's actually make one image as our active image. For now, let's just make uh, Gaussian noise as our active image. Okay, uh, the reason I'm doing this is to see how effective the Gaussian filter is at uh, at cleaning up the Gaussian noise, uh, meaning random noise, and also at cleaning up the salt and pepper noise. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, now uh, define our Gaussian kernel, which we have already done here. So let me go ahead and copy it. Okay, so let's do this multiple uh, ways. So first, let's uh, do this by defining a Gaussian kernel, and also let's uh, copy this convolution using CV2. Okay, so all we are doing is defining a Gaussian kernel and then applying that kernel uh, let's just call this and applying that kernel to our original image which is our uh, image with the Gaussian noise that's it okay so let's create uh, more room here and now let's go ahead and uh, visualize this image so for that let's do copy these lines from our previous tutorial so we don't waste time typing them and uh, what what are we looking at? The original image, okay? So as image right there, and then our con using CV2. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the code. And here it is almost instantaneously. On the left-hand side, we have the noisy image. On the right-hand side, Gaussian cleaned image with the kernel that we just provided, okay? So that looks, that doesn't look that bad. I mean, the edges are okay because the kernel size is very small. Uh, the denoising can be better. I mean, I still see a bit of noise over here compared to, you know, look at this original image. So maybe we can increase the sigma and then uh, and then clean it up. But if I want to change the sigma or if I want to change the kernel size, now I have to think about what numbers go in here. Of course, I can do that math on the side, but that's not the best way of actually doing your Gaussian uh, you know, uh, filtering. So let me delete all of this. Now that we know how to do that the hard way, let's actually do it the easy way. Okay. So now let's actually do this uh, Gaussian, let's say using CV2. Okay. Let's use OpenCV. Uh, I could have actually from uh, OpenCV import Gaussian, but it's okay. CV2 dot in uh, OpenCV, this is called Gaussian blur. Okay, so this is what it's called in OpenCV, and we are applying this on what? On our image, and uh, what size kernel do we want to use? Again, remember from my earlier PowerPoint slide, in OpenCV we define the kernel size, not the sigma. Okay, and then uh, let's actually do border type equal to let's actually do constant border. Okay, I explain what these are you know, or in my previous tutorials, I'm not wasting a lot of time uh, 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 talking about these again. So border, and since this is important, let me spend one second talking about this. So all this is doing is at the end of the image, how do you handle those pixels? It adds a constant border to the end. Okay, that means now uh, the math works out okay for these uh, uh, pixels at the end. So now let's change this to Gaussian using CV2 
OK, and go ahead and run this. Here you go. Not much difference at all, right? This looks exactly the same as uh, our uh, uh, image before when we actually defined the kernel by hand. There should not be much of any difference because the kernel sizes are three by three either way, right? So let's clear all the variables and uh, also add uh, Gaussian using scikit image, okay? Gaussian using uh, SK, let's call this SK image. And uh, we already imported this from SK image dot filters. We called it, uh, I mean, imported this as Gaussian. So Gaussian of what? Again, we are applying this on our image. And here you see image and apply a sigma and, uh, you know, uh, 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 mode equals to, in this example, they are talking about nearest. We are going to use something called constant because that adds a constant value at the end of, uh, at the, end of the grid. Uh, again, I think it's, it's worth mentioning this, right? I mean, in case, uh, just a second, I would like to use my PowerPoint uh, because this is very important. So uh, it's actually doing math, right? When we are applying a Gaussian kernel, it's actually doing math at every pixel. Now, the point is what happens when it reaches to the end? Right, because there is nothing on the right-hand side. So how, uh, when you apply the central pixel, like at 160, for example, now we are multiplying 160 by one, but what do you multiply the two with? There is nothing here. There is emptiness over there. That's why we actually do the padding. So take this image and pad it with something. It can be a constant value. It can be a value that we copy from the neighboring pixel or whatever it is. So this is exactly what we are defining when we basically say border type equals to constant or when we are defining here in a second, we will be defining, uh, uh, let's say, uh, sigma equal to one and uh, mode equals to, this is what we mean, constant, okay? And when we define a constant, we gotta define what the value is. Uh, and uh, let's actually put a value of 0, 0.0, okay? So that should be good. And let's show this image also here. So let's copy this and uh, let's say SK image, <laughs> image. And this would be Gaussian using SK image, okay? So assuming there are no typos, let's go ahead and run this. There you go, everything looks fine. And uh, you can see here is the scikit image filter, here is the CV2 OpenCV filter, and here is the original. If you use the exactly same kernel, but all these images, like the filtered images, should look the same. In this case, they don't look the same. That's because the kernels are different. In fact, if we go back here and look at our outputs coming from Gaussian using CV2 and scikit image, obviously the size of the image is the same, but if you look at individual values, they're not the same. You know, for OpenCV, it's 0 0.079. For scikit image, it's 0 0.0668 and so on. Uh, they're very similar, but they're not exactly the same because the kernels that we are defining are not exactly the same. If I put a sigma value of, for example, three, then the image should look uh, even more different. You see how now it is getting more and more blurred, okay? So uh, again, uh, we'll play with this. And uh, there is no right value or wrong value. Everything depends upon your uh, image. In fact, let's go back to sigma equals to one and have a quick look at this image. It does. It, it did a pretty good job uh, denoising. Not you know uh, eliminate the noise completely, but you can see it did a decent job. Now. Gaussian is, uh, how effective is it at cleaning salt and pepper noise? So instead of Gaussian noise image, let's apply this on salt and pepper noise image. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this one more time. You see how we have salt and pepper on the original image and then the Gaussian image using CV2, you still see a lot of salt and pepper. You still see a salt, of, a salt and pepper in the scikit image. Uh, so while Gaussian filtering is effective at filtering out most of the random noise or normally distributed noise, it's not very effective at cleaning salt and pepper types of noise. That's why one, one noise denoising algorithm may not be enough for you. So how do we clean salt and pepper noise? Well, 
the best way to do this is uh, using a median filter. So let's save that for the next tutorial. I'm going to talk about the median filter, but hopefully with this tutorial you understand exactly what Gaussian filtering is or Gaussian blur is and uh, what its strengths are and what its weaknesses are. So if you like this tutorial, again as usual I request you to please subscribe to my channel as it keeps me encouraged to create more such tutorials. Thank you very much.